Right now, double hand high five your partner, followed by, hey, start this thing out. Right now, on your paper, you have total number of workers, you have the total product, which is the total output. We'll get that once we get people up on the machine. Okay, first thing first, I am an inventor. I just invented a machine. This is a machine that converts human push-ups into electricity. Right now, the current price for electricity is $1. Every single push-up done on that machine generates a dollar for my company, therefore, I can sell it for a dollar. Does it make sense? And since we're gonna say it's perfect competition, the price is at $1, it's not gonna change. So we're gonna keep the price at $1. I can sell every single unit for $1. You guys with me? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Also, my fixed costs, you want a little note to yourself, my fixed costs, which is the cost of creating the machine, was $20. It cost me $20 to produce that machine, and it doesn't matter how many push-ups you do. If you do one push-up, you do two push-ups, you do five push-ups, it doesn't matter, I still gotta pay the $20, the fixed cost. You guys with me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Great, awesome. We also need to establish your wage. So you are, you are my workers, you're willing to do push-ups, right? You're willing to do push-ups. Now keep in mind, I'm not gonna make everyone do push-ups in this room, so just breathe. Whew. We're probably, the, we only have like five, six guys in this class anyways, those guys are gonna be doing push-ups, so just breathe. All the guys are like, what, what, what? Except for one of you was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about you, Alex. Oh. Okay, anyways, what's the wage? $5. Wage is five dollars. Right, so every single worker is willing to supply their labor for five dollars. You with me? Say yes. yes. Great, awesome. Now we need to start getting the numbers to finding out which worker should I hire and when should I stop hire and what profit am I going to make. So this is your company. You've got a company. Right? Your company produces electricity. We're going to start hiring workers. We know the price, the fixed cost, and the wage. All right, we need a worker to get on here. First, our first volunteer who's coming up. All right, give Alex a round of applause for volunteering. Come on up. Okay, it's 30 seconds on the clock. He's gonna do as many pushes as we can in 30 seconds. All right, get on the machine. Here we go, get on the machine. Yeah, that's what we need. All right, ready and go. Two, three, four, five, six, three, eight, three, nine, 40, 40. Stop! Wow, holy crud! That was impressive, I'm not gonna lie to you. Take a breather, breather, take a breather. Just sit right here and relax. Okay, so look up. Zero workers, how much output did we get? None. We got none, right? We didn't have any workers. We had one worker, how much output did we get? 41. 41. We got 41 output, right? So, so far, so good. Now we got some numbers to work with for your company. Great, we're going to bring in a second worker. Two workers working at the same time to find what's going to happen. Then we'll do three workers, then four workers, then five workers, then six workers, then seven workers, and we'll see how many actual output we're going to get. Now, look up. This is important. Technically speaking, Technically speaking, I should replace Alex. I should say, okay, it's a brand new day. It's a, it's a whole new short run where he is not no longer tired at all. But because we have a limited number of workers to work with here, and I don't want to start doing co-ed push-ups because I don't want the principal coming in and be like, what's going on here? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I'm going to have him go again and then again and again. So you're staying in here this entire time. Now, the law you're about to see has nothing to do with people getting tired. So don't, don't worry about it. That doesn't ruin this activity by any means. All right, Alex, you're back in. And we need another volunteer, so who do you want to go in with you here? Um, since I'm going to be tired, I want Sean. Sean, get in there, buddy. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, Sean. Let's do it. But I'm tired. It's hard to lift these arms. <laughs> here we go. Let's find out what's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm personally, I'm giving you time to rest, too, so give you time to rest. Good. One worker can produce 41. Two workers at the same time. Take a guess how much output you think they're going to produce. Don't tell me. Tell them. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right, here we go. When, uh, so you're, these two are doing the counting for us. All right, ready and go! Come on, Alex. Alex, go! You can, you can, you're good. Stop! All right, give him a round of applause for volunteering coming up here. So three. I think it's a 46. She's got, she counted 43. Did you count? Did you count? I Well, I was halfway through the last It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> See, Alex's uh, production was a little low because he was tired. But that doesn't ruin this activity by any means, right? By the way, also assume in the resource market, what we're talking about with labor, we assume workers are identical and not all workers with push-ups are identical. But again, the concept, you're going to be fine and that's what's important. Third worker, Sean, who would you like to get in here for you? Uh, hopefully, or now it's weird. Uh, yeah, the jacket's coming off. Woo! That's right. He he knew too. He's like, what? Me? I didn't even know you're gonna call me. 
Here we go. Yeah. All right, so we've got one worker can reduce 41. Two workers can do 60. Right now, it's time to figure out what three workers are going to produce. Alex, how are you feeling, buddy? You okay? You ready? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it's totally going to work. All right, here we go. Let's find out what's going to happen in 30 seconds. All right. Ready and get in position. Go. There we go, gentlemen. Alex is burning a little bit. Stop. Give him a round of applause. Great job. Time for a fourth worker. Keenan, who do you want in here with you? Alexander. Alexander. Martin, get up there. He zips down like everybody else. All right. Yeah, will I go underneath the table? No, you gotta do it on the. This is the machine, right? We have a limited number of resources. This is what we have. All right, gentlemen, get on there. Here we go. Now, don't get in position yet. Good. Predict with the person next to you how many push-ups they're gonna be able to do now. Don't tell me. Tell them. Ready and go. What do you mean? How many push-ups are they gonna be able to do? I don't know. All right, gentlemen, get in there. Here we go. I'll go this way. Just, I'll, I'll wait for them first. There we go. All right, so you, you, you got him? You got Martin. You got Martin. You're good. You'll get him. Just watch that. All right, here we go. Up and running. Here we go. Get in position. Up position. Up position. These girls are doing the numbers if you're wondering. All right, ready and go. Yeah, there we go. Push it. Push it. Yeah. Come on, Alex. Alex is burning. Keep going. Stop! Give him a round of applause for coming up here and doing this. Take a breather, gentlemen. Take a breather. All right, here we go. Please write down the number 85. So 41, 60, 78, 85. 85. All right. It's time to get another worker in there to find out what's going to happen. All these guys are going to be going at the same time. I want to point out again, super important, this has nothing to do with people being tired. This law that you're seeing is not about tired. It's about fixed resources, right? Said yes? yes? Good. In the back of your mind, you should be remembering the goal. The goal is to maximize profit. You should be thinking in the back of your mind, how much output should we produce? How many workers should I be hiring? My fixed costs, the price, all that stuff. Right now, gentlemen, who do you want in there? Martin, who do you would like? Someone small. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be helpful. I'm not helpful. Skinny and short, preferably. Yeah! He knew it. All right, gentlemen, let's go. Get on there. We all have to be on there. Everybody has to be on there, right? Oh, that's your way. I'll go like this. Wait, okay. Alex, Alex, put your All right, Alex, get on there. Let's go. Alexander, get on there. There we go. Get in there, gentlemen. Okay, and you're, you're counting Alexander's, right? So keep track of the numbers on here. Yeah. Okay. He handed it off to somebody. Hand it off to Sarah. All right, gentlemen, get on. Let's go. I'm going to start this clock. Get on there. Get, get on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Let's go, gentlemen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get on. Get on. Get on. Just get on. Hurry up. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Ready and go. Let's go, gentlemen. Up and down. Do not fall off, Alex. Watch your toes. There you go. Keep going. There you go. Give him a round of applause. Cheer him on. They're doing great. <laughs> Stop! Hey! Give him a round of applause. Well done. 88. 88. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more worker going to get in there. One last final worker. Who's our sixth worker? Who's getting in there? All right, you're in here, buddy. Here we go. Take the jacket off. Come on. Yeah. A lot of muscles. Let's get on. Don't, don't stand. Get in push-up position. Can I push up? You guys see what's happening here, yes? It's a very clear. All right, get on. Get on. Let's go. Get on. Get on. Get on. Everybody get on. Push up position. Ready and go. Go. Start doing push ups. Get in push up position. Get back on there. Get back on there. Get on. Get on. Push ups. Get on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Basically, get on. Get on. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. Up and down. Let's do this. Come on, Keenan. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Stop. All right, give a round of applause. It is great. Hey, well done, gentlemen. Seriously. Okay. So let's say this is, and get, let's be generous and say it's somewhere around 50. Right? Let's be generous. Okay, I got a question. Who was the last worker? The last person hired? 
Andrew. Andrew. Was it Andrew's fault that these numbers fell? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is Andrew weak? No. I'm glad they picked Andrew. Andrew can do a lot of push-ups. I guarantee we put him on here on his own. He can do a lot of push-ups. So it's not unintelligence. It's not weakness. What's the reason? Why did this occur? Fix the resources and overcrowding. This is what we learned back in unit three. Now let's see if we can put it all together. Eyes up here, look up. You've got a price of the electricity. I can sell every single push-up for a dollar. The fixed cost is 20. The wage I'll hire each worker at is $5. Now that I have output, I gotta figure out how many workers to hire, how much output I'm gonna make, how much profit I'm gonna earn. Not me, you, you, you run the business, look up. Question number one, I wanna know, what is the number of workers? of workers to maximize profit. How many workers should you hire? Number two, how much profit are you gonna earn? How much is it? And number three is how much output are you going to create? Right, so you run a business. Let's find out if you can use economics to run your business. Look up, I'll help you out. So there's obviously a little bit of confusion. I'll help you out a little bit. First question, how much does each worker cost to your company? Five dollars. Your, your question should be this, is that worker worth it? Ask yourself, was the first worker worth five dollars? Was the second worker worth five dollars? Was the third worker worth five dollars? Was the fourth worker worth? If you keep doing that, keep hiring workers if they're worth it. If they're not worth it, you don't hire that worker. Does that make sense? Good, once you know how many workers you hire, then it's not hard, you've got output, Right? You've got price, you've got the fixed cost, wage is a variable cost, right? it's all there, all the pieces are there, the question is can you put them together? It's okay if you're confused, right? but this is how you run a business someday, you have to be able to figure out how to hire a worker or not. Right? Good, keep working with your partner. I'm gonna help you out a little bit more. The first thing you have to do is make a new column. Right? This information is not as helpful as needed. We need another thing, we need marginal product. Marginal product, we did this back in unit three. Great. We ought to know the additional output produced from each one of the workers. If I know the additional output, then I can figure out the additional revenue they generate. Would we ever hire six workers? Nope. Absolutely not. So we know that's thrown off. We're not going to hire six workers because you would never hire where your total product is actually falling. So obviously we've got now you know, multiple choice to figure this out. Yeah? Great. Now the next step is what's the value of these workers versus what's their cost, which is a new concept. Right? The concept which you haven't learned yet, but you're about to learn now, is called marginal revenue product. The value generated by that worker. What's the value generated by the first worker? $41. How'd you get that? How on earth did you get $41? I am willing to pay that first worker up to $41, not a dollar more. Why? Times the, not the output, the, not price times, it is price times the output here, but it's not 60. This one's not gonna be 60. This one's not gonna be, it's not price times the output, it's the price times the, Marginal product. And the person next to you, figure out the additional value of each worker, the marginal revenue product. Good, if you're confused, that's okay. You have a partner to figure it out. All right, look up. Your marginal revenue product is the revenue generated from each worker, right? The additional revenue. So the second worker brought in 19 output. What's the revenue they brought in? 30. Sorry, what? 30, no. 19. 19. What? How did I get that? If I bring it, if I think of it this way, if I sell 19 pizzas, or if I produce 19 pizzas, and I can sell for a dollar each, then I'm worth $19 to that company. You with me? Yeah. Good, what's the next worker gonna be worth? 18, next worker's worth seven, next worker's worth three, next worker, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna hire six workers, so it doesn't matter. Yes? Yeah. Again, this is the marginal revenue product, the revenue generated from these workers. The number will always fall. Why is the number always gonna fall? Why did the number fall? Not because the workers are stupid. Not because the workers are not strong, why? Because the law of diminishing marginal returns. Each worker will be worth less additional revenue because each worker can produce less stuff because of fixed resources. Yes? Good, I'm handing it to you. If you can't do the next step, we're a problem. You know the value. You know the wage. You can figure out how many workers to hire. Should you hire this one? Should you hire this one? Should you hire this one? Go down the line with your partner. Figure out the rest of this stuff, all right? Talk to your partner. Figure out which workers should you hire and how much profit you're gonna make total from those workers. All right, bring it in. I'm gonna help you out a little more, because I care about you. Marginal resource cost, a new concept. What's the additional cost of another worker? How much does a co worker cost to your company? Five dollars. What's another worker cost to your company? Five dollars. What's another worker cost? They always cost you another five dollars. Why? Because the wage is five dollars. If the wage is five, then the additional cost from that worker is five. All right, do not look down, most important part of the show. Will you hire a worker if they bring in $41 and cost you five? Yes. Should, should you hire a second worker? Yes. Third worker? Yes. 
Fourth worker. Yes, five workers. No, the right answer is four workers. But we're not done. Now you have to calculate the profit. So what's the total revenue? What's the total cost? Including your fixed costs, how much is the profit? Now, before we move on, let me help you out. The answer to this one was four. Four workers. That was the answer here. Everybody with me? Say yes. Good. The output, just look at the chart. What's the output you're going to produce? Look, what's it say? 85. Great. Now you know your workers and you know your wage. You can figure out your costs. Now you know what output. You know the price. You can figure out your revenue. Good. With your partner, we've got three minutes left. Calculate that profit. So here we go. Let's do the calculation for profit. Profit. Profit equals what? Total revenue minus total cost. What kind of costs are there? Fixed costs plus your variable costs. All right, here we go. So your profit is going to be your total revenue. What's your total revenue? Well, how do we figure out total revenue? Let's figure it out. What's total revenue? It's your price times the quantity, yes? You guys with me or no? no? Good. What's the price you sold each unit for? One. I sold it for a dollar each. How many did I sell? Eighty-five. Eighty-five dollars total money came in. All right, so far so good. Total cost. Well, my fixed cost was how much? 20, because I gave it to you. Each worker cost how much? Five dollars. And so what's my total cost? I lost you. Did I lose you? Did I lose you? No, 40. You sure? It's 40. How's it 40? Well, four workers times five dollars each was $20 for my variable cost. My workers cost me $20, plus another $20 of fixed cost, give me $40 of total cost. How much profit are you making? $45 profit. That's the right answer. Great. It's OK if you got, didn't get that, but that's how you run a business. you got to think like an economist. Hey, how are you doing, econ teachers? This is Jacob Clifford. The push-up machine is one of the most fun and exciting activities that my students do in econ. And it's great because it has very practical applications. The question is, how many workers should you hire? So if you have a business someday and you want to use good economics and you want to maximize profit, how many workers should you hire? I start this activity by telling students that they're managers at a company that converts human push-ups into electricity. So each time someone does a push-up on that machine, it generates $1 worth of electricity for the company. I also tell the students that their fixed cost is $20. So it doesn't matter if they produce one push-up or 30 push-ups in any given round, they still have to pay $20 of fixed cost. The last thing we have to do is figure out the wage, which in this case is $5. The wage for each worker is $5. I start off by hiring no workers, and of course with no workers there's no push-ups, and so there's no output. Then I hire one worker and they can do as many push-ups as they can in 30 seconds. That's the time limit, 30 seconds, as many push-ups as possible, and record it on the board as the total product, the total amount produced by one worker. Then we hire two workers and see how much output they can produce. So two workers, how much output, and we record that on the board. Then we do three workers, then four workers, then five workers, and eventually six workers, all doing push-ups for 30 seconds each in these different rounds. 30 seconds, as many push-ups as possible. Now that we know how many push-ups they can produce, we can start to figure out how many workers they should hire. In fact, there's three questions you have to ask students. Number one, how many workers should you hire to maximize profit? Number two, what output should you produce? Like, how many push-ups should you produce to maximize profit? And number three, how much is that profit? And all the information is right there. They have the price of push-ups, They've got the fixed cost, they've got the wage, and now they have the output for each one of these workers. Now, as you can see, sometimes I help the students along. I, I give them clues how they can figure it out. It's all about using marginal analysis. Marginal analysis is the idea of looking at the benefit and cost, the incremental benefit and cost of any decision. So what's the additional benefit versus the additional cost? In this case, what's the additional revenue generated from another worker versus the additional cost of a worker? Now, the additional revenue of the worker is the marginal product, the additional output, the additional push-ups each worker generates times the price of a push-up, which is a dollar. Each worker generates less and less additional revenue because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Each worker is gonna produce less because there's a fixed number of resources, only so much room on the machine to do the work. So to figure out how many workers they should hire, the students should look at the additional revenue generated from each additional worker, Compare that to the additional cost, which is just the wage, right? Another worker costs another $5. Another worker costs another $5. Another worker $5 because the wage is constant. And they should maximize profit as long as the marginal revenue they generate is greater than the marginal cost of hiring those workers. To figure out the output, they just need to look at the chart. And the profit is the total revenue minus the total cost. Total revenue is price times quantity. The price is a dollar, right? Each push-up generates a dollar worth of electricity. They did a certain number of push-ups. That's their total revenue. 
their costs are their fixed costs, the $20 of fixed costs I gave them in the beginning, minus all their variable costs, which in this case is just labor costs. So that's the number of workers they hired times the wage of those workers. When you subtract out the total cost from that total revenue, that gives you the profit. Like I said, this is a great activity to introduce the idea of diminishing marginal returns, but also to show this idea of marginal analysis and deciding how many should you do, if anything, how many units should you produce or how many workers should you hire. It's all based on marginal analysis making sure the additional revenue or additional benefit is greater than the additional cost. Once the additional benefit falls below additional cost, you don't produce that, you don't hire that, you don't do that thing. Now, if you teach AP economics, it's important to connect this to the graph. We've got a horizontal supply, which is the marginal resource cost. Remember, this is a wage taker, that's the wage, and the demand is downward sloping. Each worker is gonna generate less additional revenue for the company because of the law of diminished marginal returns. So each worker generates less revenue, so the demand's downward sloping, demand equals the marginal revenue product. You hire workers where the MRP hits the MRC. The graph I asked you before, do you know this, to pass AP test, is literally the flipped version of the graph we're learning in this unit. If you know this, you know this. Price taker, wage taker, right? Demand is falling, each worker is worth less. When you produce here, you produce where MR equals MC, where do you hire? Where the MRP equals the MRC. Same concept, over and over again. Perfect competitive product market, perfect competitive resource market, no ATC. There's no, there's no box, there's no nothing here. That's the key graph we're gonna learn. Make sense? Yeah. All right, bonus round. Let's talk about how you set this activity up. First, the tables. Make sure you have very strong, sturdy tables. Uh, if you need to, you can shore them up with some wood or something like that. But make sure they're strong enough for five, six kids to do push-ups on. Second, it's important to pick students that you know can do the push-ups. I mean, in real life, a perfectly competitive resource market, the workers have identical skills. But no two students usually have the identical number of push-ups they can do in 30 seconds. So uh, keep in mind that there are some problems with this activity. It's not very realistic, like 100% realistic for the textbook, but very realistic for life. So again, when you're hiring workers, make sure the workers all can do the same general number of push-ups or it messes the numbers up and you'll be explaining concepts to your students that don't make any sense. And don't be afraid to fudge the numbers if you need to. Remember, our goal here is to teach economics, not to do a certain number of push-ups. So if you don't get the numbers you want, tell the students, listen, uh, you know, let's just change the number to this. In fact, one of the things I do is I have students around the room recording different people doing push-ups, and I, you know, collect those numbers each round. Uh, so after round two, I go, okay, what did, you know, this person get and this person get, and I add up those numbers to figure out their total product. Sometimes I'll just make the numbers up, and the students don't even know the difference. Um, but ideally, I can use their numbers, but nothing in the world is perfect, and I want perfect numbers so I can explain this idea and show that the marginal product is falling for each worker. Now, the teacher resources, I have a worksheet that students fill out that goes with this activity, and I've done it different ways. I've had the students fill this out, you know, define marginal revenue product, and talk about calculate marginal revenue product and marginal resource cost, and then run the activity, or I've done it the other way, where I've ran activity and then gone back and had them fill this out. And the reason why is I like them to see if they can figure it out without knowing the definition of marginal revenue product or the marginal resources. Hey, bonus round, a quick one. Something I like to do at the end of this activity is introduce the idea of minimum wage. The students have already established how many workers you should hire based on that wage of $5. They already know the output and they already know the profit. Then I say, okay, what if the government came in and said the wage is now 10? You cannot hire workers for $5 anymore. There's a wage floor at $10. That's the minimum wage. Well, what's gonna happen? Can I do this not to put down minimum wage or uh, to tell them minimum wage is bad, because there's obviously good things about it too, but I introduce this to explain the logic of what minimum wage can do and the trade-offs of minimum wage. Let's say the government came in to this market. They don't affect the price of electricity. They don't affect the fixed costs, they affect the wage. They say, listen, you can't pay workers $5. You gotta pay them 10. You gotta pay people 10. That's not gonna affect the number of push-ups they can do at all. It affects, though, how many workers are hired, right? So now, I don't want you to recalculate. I want you to re-understand the idea. If the wage is 10, good, lean the person next to you, what's gonna happen to the number of workers hired and what's gonna happen to the MRP? See if you can figure out what a minimum wage does to firms. All right, ready and go. But why? Minimum wage alone cannot solve our problem with poverty. It cannot do so because of the numbers. Do you see the problem? What's the problem? Well, what happens is this. The MRC is going to change. Now the cost of each worker is what? 10. Another worker 10. Another worker 10. I used to hire four workers. Can I hire four workers anymore? No. 
I cannot hire you. Not because I'm a jerk. Not because I don't like the president that established the minimum wage. Not because I hate liberals and damn minimum wage is ruining life. Why can I not hire you? The revenue you generate from my company is not high enough to justify the higher wage. I've got to fire you. In this case, I've got to hire three workers. This worker gets axed, not because they're dumb, I just, you're just not worth it anymore. Make sense? Now, I'm not saying, don't take me wrong, that minimum wage is all bad. Minimum wage has merits. There's some good things about minimum wage, but there's a trade off like everything else. You can't think, like, there's some people who are like, dude, just make the minimum wage 20 bucks. We'll be better off. You're like, nope, doesn't work that way. I hope you really like this activity. I tell you, students love it. They laugh, they giggle. It's funny to see them flopping on the uh, push up machine. But I hope you enjoy it and I hope your students learn a lot, okay? Thanks for watching. Till next time.